Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create and analyze a basic pumping test using Aquifer Test. So I'm here on the start screen. This is the screen that pops up when you first open up Aquifer Test, and I'll make sure that Create Pumping Test is checked, and I'll create my new project by selecting the Create a New Project button right here. And this will bring me to a new blank project. Now for a real project, I would probably want to save this somewhere sensible, so I'd go to File, Save As, and select a folder. And before I start going off and creating this pumping test, I think it's worth to take a second to talk about the basic workflow in Aquifer Test for analyzing the pumping test. So at the top of the screen, you'll notice that there's these different tabs with names like pumping test, discharge, water levels, analysis, etc. In Aquifer Test, we start by working at the leftmost tab and working our way rightwards, entering in various information towards the rightmost tabs. In the pumping test workflow, the four essential tabs that we'll be using are the pumping test tab, the discharge tab, the water levels tab, and the analysis tab. You also have these tabs for creating a map and also exporting reports, but these are beyond the scope of this video. In this first tab, the pumping test tab, you first just enter in the pumping test information. So this includes the basic info, like what the project's name is, uh, who the client is, and what the location is. You'll do things like specify what the units are that you're using for your analysis. You'll do things like add different wells and specify what their different locations and geometries are. Once that's done, you can move on to the discharge tab. So here you'll enter in your discharge data. So you'll state at what rates different pumping wells were pumped at. Note that variable pumping rates and multiple pumping wells are supported within Aquifer Test. After that, there's the water level data tab. And here you'll enter in your different water level measurements for your various pumping and observational wells. And finally, you have the analysis tab. So here you can select a type of analysis and fit it to a type curve. And in fact, you can do multiple analyses on a pumping test if you so wish. Okay, so we're back in the Aquifer Test interface, and we're starting off here on the Pumping Test tab, where we'll put in the basic information for the pumping test, as well as the information about the different wells involved. So for the project name, we'll just call this Pumping Test Demo, and I'll leave everything else blank. For the units, the site plan affects the length units that are used for things like coordinates and on maps, so I'll change it to feet. For the dimensions, this affects which units are used for the dimensions of the well, as well as the thickness of the aquifer. So I'll change this to feet. Time, I'll change to minutes. This is the unit used on your discharge and water level data. For the discharge unit, I'll change this to gallons per minute. And for the transmissivity, I'll change this to square feet per day. For the information about the pumping test itself, I'll leave these on the defaults. And for the aquifer properties, I'll change the thickness to 48 feet. This will affect what our calculated transmissivity is. For the type, this doesn't affect any of our results, but just for my own records, I'll specify that this is a confined aquifer. Now we can start putting in the information for the different wells. So of course, for a pumping test, you need at least one pumping well. And for the name, I'll just call it PW1. For this analysis, we're going to be using the TICE solution. And as it turns out, in the TICE solution, the only well geometry details that matter are the distance from the observation well to the pumping well. Of course, in a real project, it's recommended to put in as much information here as you can. So on this table, you have things like the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, as well as these different columns for different parts of the well geometry, things like the screen radius, the casing radius, etc. But again, for time, I'll omit those because those won't affect the results. So for the pumping well, I want to put it on the origin. So I'll say it's x coordinate is zero and it's y coordinate is zero. And now I've filled out all the information that I need to for the pumping well. For this test, we had an observation well, which is where we measured our drawdown data from. So to add it onto this table, I'll select the click here to create a new well button, which will add in the well. By default, the type is automatically set to observation well. And for its name, I'll say that it's called OW1. Now, I know that this well was 824 feet away from the pumping well. And since I'm not using real coordinates here, I'll just enter in its x-coordinate as 824 feet. 
and its y coordinate as zero feet, and I'll leave everything else here blank. So I'm now ready to move on to the discharge tab, which I can do simply by selecting the discharge tab at the top. So in the discharge tab, you enter in your pumping data for your various pumping wells. You select which pumping well you want to put in data for in this table here at the upper left. As you can see, currently there's only one pumping well, so it's selected by default. For this test, there is a constant discharge of 220 gallons per minute. So I'll just enter it in, but note that if I had variable discharges, I could also enter in that information explicitly just by selecting this variable button here and then filling out this table, starting with the time that that pumping period ended and the discharge rate for that pumping period. But I'll put it back on a constant and now I'll move on to the water levels tab. In the water levels tab, I will put in the water level observations for my various wells. Note that I can select which well I'm putting in my observational data for in this pane in the upper left. So I want to select OW1 here. And for this observational data, by default, the reference system used is water level elevations. However, for my data, I just have drawdown data. So for the reference system right here, I'll select it and select time drawdown. And before I start entering in information here, I need to put in a static water level. So since it's just drawdown data, I can simply use zero feet here. And now I could enter in this data manually, but I can also simply import it. So I'll select import data and I'll select my time drawdown data. And it's been brought into aquifer test. Now I can move on to my analysis. So now at the analysis tab, here I can start off by displaying my drawdown data from my different wells. So I'll select OW1 and check this box here. And now we can see that we've got time drawdown data being drawn here in this box. Note that for any pumping test, you can actually have multiple analyses associated with it. So for this analysis, I'll just call it TICE analysis. And now to actually select that I'm doing a TICE analysis on this, I'll go to the analysis method pane here in the upper right, and I'll find TICE. So the TICE solution is an analytical method used for confined aquifers. There are also other assumptions that you can review in the documentation. And now to fit this curve, I have several options. I could fit it manually using this show parameter controls button, then manually finding some combination of transmissivity and storage terms that fit my data. But I also have the ability to automatically fit it. This is done using this automatic fit button right here, which I can select. And I can see that the curve is automatically fitted. To actually view the results, these are available in this results pane. So one results pane will exist for every well which you are analyzing data from. And here we can see that the calculated best fit had a transmissivity of about 1300 square feet per day and a storage coefficient of about two times 10 to the negative fifth. I can also change how this graph is being visualized. So for example, a common way to visualize TICE data would be in log log form. I can do that by selecting this apply graph settings button and selecting log log, changing the view. And I also have all these other options here to do things like change how the different axes are being presented, change the actual size of the diagram itself, as well as the symbols on the diagram, etc., just to make this more presentable. Of course, Aqua Test has many more functionalities and capabilities, but again, this is just supposed to be a quick video showing you how to conduct a pumping test. So thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.